what I thought was the best of the bunch, is it? What's going on YouTube land? I'm Chris Catalunya. If you haven't checked out my Instagram, Chris Catalunya with an underscore at the end, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll know when I upload a new video. Fight the algorithm, especially since 95% of y'all watching these videos aren't subscribed to the channel. I'd appreciate the support. FYI, I'm being sent to New York to do some work with a software sneaker platform. If you see me up at New York at Seoul, definitely come up to me, say what's up. Now, I can't promise that I won't be shy and awkward, that's just my personality, but definitely dab me up. The show is on April 16th, 2022, so buy your tickets now. Last month, Concepts and Nike collaborated on the Air Max silhouette inspired by the events of the 1960s, specifically Woodstock and the Vietnam War. Now, this effort produced two general release models, the Heavies and the Mellows. You can watch that review up in the corner above. The third release was for a folks and fans release. It's called The Far Outs. Luckily, getting through the concepts website and getting the shoe shipped out, this is what we received. It's pretty big. The box is pretty dope as it incorporates this Volkswagen bus-like vehicle with psychedelic designs going throughout the box. Flipping the lid are the shoes themselves and some goodies. We have four decals, a record jacket with two vinyl record coasters, a rain poncho, an air freshener, and a bandana. Removing the shoe box, we're getting the same box like the heavies and the mellows. Flipping the lid, the far outs. We got the same tissue paper going on with the flower power and the concepts design, and then the shoes under that. Concepts released these via the website and in store on March 26, 2022. Retail was set for $230 USD. With taxes and shipping to Texas, I spent $270, which is funny because resale is about that same level, just depending on the size that you need. Looking at StockX and GOAT, they have them going between $300 and $400. And it's kind of crazy because this special box release is flopping much like the 2020 release of the special box Tur Duncans, but I think the Tur Duncans had a better goodie option with the Nerf ball set. There's no doubt, people have asked if the price increased from $170 of the other two models to this $230 model is valid. And to be quite honest, I could have done without the special box. The goodies are just, eh, they just don't do too much for me, though the box is hella dope. Now, let's talk about the shoe. Initially, I ranked this project with the far outs on top, the heavies, and then the mellows. Now, having all three shoes in hand, it's more like this now, where the heavies are on top, the mellows, and then these are dead last. And it's funny because I saw someone wearing these during the Sneaker Politics Austin drops, and I swore that these were the best of the bunch. Falling in line with the two other shoes, this also aligns with that Woodstock theme. These attain a guitar pick that's done in a teal color and also has two extra sets of laces, where you have one that's of a white poly build and then the other one, which is a velvet red orange lace, both of a flat shape. The default lace is of that same red orange color done in that poly blend. I'm loving that velvet red orange tongue that sits behind those laces. While crowned at the top, you have that white woven label with Nike branding and the concepts bubble font. The uppers are a multitude of textiles, even including real cowhide near the vamp area. Blue jean panels are found on the quarter panels of the lateral and the medial and at the vamp of the shoe, featuring those Woodstock ticket symbols right here, done in the slash, the star, and the moon. The base that goes all the way around is done in a canvas fabric that is utilizing that purple paisley print design. Where you get to the heel, it's using a green paisley design. It is here where we see Nike Air embroidered onto the heel in white and the loose threads. Above that, a Mexican blanket print with concepts spelled out contrasts with those ladder panels. Nike swooshes are both found on the lateral and the medial. The lateral features three color line art where the medials include a flower power swoosh. Lastly, for the upper, brown corduroy is found at the last eyelets. Getting inside, the sock liner is padded well around the ankle and features red orange knit mesh that resembles cords. Reminding me just a little bit of the Beatles' Yellow Submarine, we see more of that psychedelic design on the insoles. 
definitely Blue Meanie vibes. We meanies only take no pananza. The heel features branding for both camps and a sticker reminding you that this shoe is not vegan. And all of this is placed on a thin piece of gray insole foam. The midsole, it attains paint splatter of the same color that's on the outsole. I love that this splatter, it gets onto the air bubble, making it look as if you were stepping in the muds at Woodstock. The structures inside the chamber dons the same colors. Now this air unit, it combats impact, making your strides a bit more comfortable. The outsole is of a tan color, taking on the traditional Air Max 1 traction marks. Created of a blown rubber component, it's pretty durable, pretty flexible. Concerning sizing, definitely go with true to size. They do have Air Max 1 sitting at most mall retailers, so you should be likely to get sized up properly at a retailer before buying these on the secondary market. In terms of comfort, people swear by the Air Max 1s. I do like the fit of them and I do like the cushioning system. However, you can always pop out your insoles and replace them with some Hella Flux or some grocery store insoles or even your prescribed orthotics if you're not feeling the stock insoles. Overall, this collaborative project between Concepts and Nike was a home run. Now, concerning the Far Outs release, it's definitely not my favorite special box release. Now, initially thinking that the Far Outs were the best of the bunch and having them in hand now, it's probably my least favorite of the three. And I'm not too sure why that is. Maybe in getting them in hand and seeing what clothes I have in my closet, that's how these became the least wearable to me and that's pretty important to me. I definitely would have appreciated a regular box release and a special box release, just like they had done with the Turd Duncans, cause 170 really is all I wanted to pay for these. All right guys, I think this is a good stopping point for this video. What are your thoughts on the far outs and how are you ranking the three Woodstock inspired styles? And what's your favorite Nike Concepts collaboration? Mine are the Green Lobsters. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Chris Catalunya with an underscore at the end. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll know when I upload a new video. Fight the algorithm. Thanks for kicking it with me. I'm Chris Catalunya, and we will check you next time. Cheers. See you now.